Hey there survivors, Douglas of Drowned Boy Productions here, bringing you another screen mask guide. However, today we do not have a movie mask guide. Instead, we have a guide for MTV's Scream the Series. I've been back and forth on whether to make this a two-parter, you know, do one video on season one and another on season two, and of course we will be covering season three, Scream Resurrection as well, but I was back and forth on whether to split it up for each season or just go ahead and put season one and two together. And after thinking about it, I was like, you know, the masks are kind of similar enough and there's just enough information that I think we can go ahead and just put those both together. So this will be covering seasons one and two. I'm also going to be excluding one type of mask because it's not a killer mask or a decoy killer mask, nothing that's meant to serve as a killer mask, which is just the masquerade masks that appear in season two. Um, they're not really spooky, scary, not a huge part of the story, so those will be excluded. So this is mostly going to be covering actual killer masks or, you know, any red herring masks, if you will. Where do I even start on this one? I guess... If you've never even given the series a chance and you're watching this just because you're interested in the masks, I strongly suggest that you actually give the series a chance. Oddly enough, I feel like the reason that most people judge it so harshly is because of the mask and the character not being Ghostface. But aside from the sin of not being Ghostface, I think the Lakewood Slasher is a very creepy and very brutal killer. And to show you all how creepy the Lakewood Slasher could have been, I guess let's start with the lesser known, lesser seen, original look for the Lakewood Slasher. Now initially I was hoping to show this to you guys in a very different manner. I was actually given the opportunity to own the very original screen used mask that we're going to be taking a look at a replica of here in a second, as well as another mask that was not screen used but was production made that's very much so done in the same style. As far as I know, there were three of these masks that were created, one of which is with another very well-known collector, these other two were in the hands of another well-known somewhat private collector. Um, we were back and forth on working out deals with this situation. Unfortunately, he ended up putting them on Prop Store, they ended up selling there, and uh, it didn't work out. Needless to say, I did not end up with those here. I was really looking forward to having those in hand to teach you guys the history of these masks and show you this mask in person. But uh, that didn't work out, but we do have a very cool replica. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the original one that was actually used in the pilot episode. Here we have the Lakewood Slasher Flesh Mask. Now, many of you may recall, when the MTV Scream series was very first being promoted, there was a lot of buzz about the fact that Ghostface, or the killer in this, which wasn't really known as like the Lakewood Slasher or anything, it was just the killer for the new Scream series was going to be wearing a flesh mask of some sort. I believe you can even look back and find articles about that, and there is an initial trailer that does show some glimpses of this very mask. Yet again, the one I'm holding is not the original Scream used one, unfortunately, it almost worked out that way, but this is a very nice, very accurate replica, which was done by Samir Ghazi. Yes, this is a very, very cool, very creepy looking mask, and uh, I don't know why it was called a flesh mask, because clearly this is made out of burlap. This is more akin to like a scarecrow mask than a flesh mask, but this is what it looked like. Very, very creepy. There were two other versions, as I stated, and those versions were nowhere near as heavily stitched and weathered and dirty and creepy as this one. They were much lighter in color, but this is by far the creepiest one. And this is the look that was actually used, like I said, for the pilot episode. Not a lot of people have noticed this detail, but if you rewatch the initial pilot episode, anytime you see the killer, you're seeing an altered version of it. Now, when I was watching this, I thought that maybe they digitally altered it to make it a bit brighter, like the lighting was off for the mask or something. But no, apparently they actually shot that entire episode with this mask and they covered it up with the more traditional style, this version, the black and white one, that we're used to. It's worth noting that the killer attire was a bit different as well. When we see the actual full-fledged killer for pretty much the entire series, they're wearing a rain poncho and the black and white mask. However, initially the killer wearing this mask was wearing more of like a raincoat, like rain slicker, not a poncho. There are of course photos of this on set and I will be putting those on screen, but this is a very interesting history because this is actually on screen and I think you can actually catch some glimpses of it in the reflection uh, whenever he's killing the initial victim and maybe even in the reflection of some water. 
So you do see it in a couple of shots, but not very often, and it pretty much was digitally covered up. And I don't think I've mentioned the name of the team that created this mask as well, but the name of the team that created this mask, as well as the actual normal mask, which they're both made off of the same sculpture, as well as the mask that was mass produced, is Deity Creative. They sculpted and created this original concept. There were some other concepts that were created. I think only one of which we've seen, which looked more like a very blank hockey mask. At least it's ones that were actually fabricated. There is some really cool concept art of some other ones that they sketched out. But out of all the different ideas that they came up with, personally, I do think the burlap look or the flesh mask is the absolute creepiest. Imagine, yet again, if we would have gotten that TV show and it had this as the mask, and instead of being called Scream, it was called Lakewood or something along those lines. You know, more of like a Dawson's Creek ode, where it really has those Scream themes to it, but it's not going to be so heavily judged for trying to be Scream. I think that it would have been a hit. I think the slasher would have been absolutely adored. And, I mean, even if they would have made those name changes with that guy, I think it would have been a lot better, but... If I had to choose, I personally think that they should have kept this mask because it is so much creepier. But let me know in the comment section down below, guys, what do you think? Did they definitely make the right choice by going with the more clean, black and white, more classic, I guess kind of an ode to ghost face mask? Or do you like something like this, which is a bit more creative and definitely a lot creepier? Well, there you have it for the flesh mask. Yet again, it's kind of seen, kind of not in the final product, but it was used on set and was technically like screen used. It was filmed for sure. Very interesting history with that one, and it's going to definitely be something that if you go back and rewatch the pilot, you're going to notice it for sure. Next up is the star of the show with the main hero, Killer Mask. Now, back here, I actually do have an entire screen use Lakewood Slasher Killer costume, and of course, he does have one of the real legitimate masks on it. Let me go ahead and try and pull this off for you guys. All right, here we have the main style of mask that was used by the killer for the MTV Scream series. This is the Lakewood Slasher mask. There were some other plastic masks featured, however, we'll get to that in a minute. This is basically the same as the mass-produced masks, but yet again, we'll get to that in a minute. These were also designed and created by Deity Creative, as mentioned before, and I do believe that the very same base that they used for the burlap mask is essentially what they used to create this version. They were just airbrushed, of course. In my opinion, this is pretty much the sole reason why so many people hate the series, and I don't know why so many people hate this mask. All I can think of is simply because it's called Scream, people want Ghostface. They want that classic Ghostface. And everyone calls this one the Blowjob Mask. And I guess it doesn't help when, you know, the killer's initials are BJ, Brandon James. But at the same time, like, cut it some slack, guys. It's a pretty creepy, pretty damn cool mask. But there are a lot of people that love this mask, and there are many people that have made replicas over the years, and they've tried sculpting their own to get as close as possible. However, the closest, you know, kind of was already mass-produced. Yet again, we'll get to that in a second. Now, as for how many of these were created by Deity for filming, I'm not sure, but there are some nice behind-the-scenes photos of them painting the actual hero killer masks, and those were used for seasons one and two. Then, we get to the next mask that Deity also created. You can already tell by the Vans box, that's right, we have the plastic mask. This one's a bit damaged, so I'm not going to use this one as an example, but if you've watched the series, you already get this. After creating what was used as the main hero killer mask, Deity Creative was tasked with creating another version of said mask that was used for the promotional cycle of Season 1 of the TV series. Now, this was primarily used, I believe, at San Diego Comic-Con. I'm not sure if these were used at any other events, but essentially what they were is this. Now, they're a bit different than these. The ones that were made, I'm pretty certain, for the promotional cycle were a bit thicker plastic. However, they were sculpted exactly the same, so they had the sculpted on buckles. I don't have an exact number for how many of the promotional versions they had to make, but to avoid having to make all the different strap hardware systems and all the different straps, they sculpted on the buckles. So you can see that on the mass-produced version because, of course, the very same version was then mass-produced. But yeah, essentially the promotional version that was created by Deity off of the original sculpt was then made for mass production by Fun World, and that's what we have here. One of the tagged mass-manufactured versions. These, of course, are made out of a very, very thin plastic. I wish they were a bit thicker and more of like an injection molded mask because these would have been really high quality masks. 
Unfortunately, they're not super high quality, but they still kind of do have lineage to that original sculpture. So if you're a fan of the TV series, um, whether for the reason that these actually do make an appearance in the show, or if you're just looking for something accurate sculpt-wise, with a decent repaint and a little bit of work, I bet these could look pretty fantastic. But as I mentioned, these do make an appearance in the TV series in several different spots. At the beginning of Season 2, when Audrey is pranked in the theater, it's one of these masks. Uh, whenever you see Gustavo with one, where it's kind of like his red herring mask, um, he has one of these. Whenever Kieran is taped up in the Funhouse later, um, whenever, what is it, the Masquerade at the end, there's some more there. I feel like there's somewhere else that makes an appearance. But it makes several different appearances throughout the show, and primarily they're used kind of as like a red herring mask. I think it's something that's more so supposed to make the characters in that moment think that it's the Lakewood Slasher instead of the audience, because I don't know about you guys, but when these came on screen versus the original Killer Masks, I could definitely tell the difference almost immediately. Moving right along to another red herring mask, we have a very easy one to find, a very cheap, very simple pickup. So if you're a fan of the series, I say just grab one of these because, at least as of current, they seem to be popping up still pretty much every Halloween. Here we have what I like to call the blackmail mask, because of course, they primarily make an appearance when they're being used to blackmail. I don't necessarily want to name the characters that wear the masks, because I guess it might ruin it. I don't know how upset people are going to be about spoilers, because even though I think like these videos are more so for like fans who have already seen the series, there apparently are still plenty of people who watch this who haven't, so I guess I'll try to keep it spoiler free, but yeah, essentially these are used for blackmail, it's not like a killer mask. But still, they're pretty easy to come across, and they're usually like five, ten bucks maybe, so if you're trying to add it to your collection, it's definitely a quick, easy pickup. Another mask that would be a quick, easy pickup that I actually already own, but for some reason I can't find my copy, is uh, Grayson's Prank Mask. We'll call it the Prank Mask. Um, it's worn by the character Grayson, as I just stated, and it is an altered blank white male mask. Um, they're pretty common, I believe these masks are actually offered in several different plastic colors, but this one specifically is altered to look more like the Lakewood Slasher or Brandon James mask. It even actually has some added like belt buckles or the straps to them. It's a pretty cool looking thing, not seen too often, and it is somewhat of like a red herring slash prank mask. And I do have one of those masks here, but like I said, can't find it, and my copy isn't altered so I guess it wouldn't be a great addition to this video anyway. But it was still worth mentioning, so I had to throw it in, and hopefully you'll forgive me for not having a copy here. And I've got one more extra mask for you all, and this one is kind of a special one, because it was used in the special. It's definitely the outlier from anything we've talked about so far. Only really seen in, like, one episode, but it was a special. Of course, I could not forget to mention the Anna Hobbs Killer Mask. If you have not seen the Halloween special, which is essentially the last episode of this entire story arc of season one and two, I strongly recommend that you go catch up. I mean, what are you doing watching this if you haven't seen it? But yes, there is an alternate killer that is not the Lakewood Slasher. Another killer joins the series and chases after our survivors, and they pretty much wear one of these masks. It's just a weird bag mask that's handmade. This one is not a screen used one, this is yet another replica by Samir Ghazi, Sam the Gaz Man, coming in clutch with not only this replica and the flesh mask replica, but he also took the time out of his day to go through and get all the screenshots that I'm using in this video. I've been tied up with a bunch of other stuff, but Samir helped me out there, so please guys give a huge thank you to Samir. And uh, yeah, the Anna Hobbs Killer one is definitely a cool one and also a pretty easy costume to put together. So yeah guys, I think that about covers it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you're a fan of the MTV Scream series, let me know in the comments section down below. And also, let me know out of all these masks, which is your favorite. Personally, I really, really wish that they would have went with this mask. I'm just curious how well received this show would have been if it would have been a wildly different character and of course, not the Scream name. And of course, if you're watching this and you've never given the series a chance, please, please go give the series a chance. I think it's severely underrated. If you actually watch it through, I think you'll enjoy it. If not, then oh well. If you don't like it, at least your opinions about it being bad will be reconfirmed. 
So you've got nothing to lose. Go give it a shot. And with that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed yet another mask review. This time a TV series mask review, not a movie mask review. And we'll have another TV series mask review coming with Season 3, Scream Resurrection. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And at some point in the future, we will still be covering Scary Movie. I love you all. Thank you for watching and see you next time.